I've made my Lily 58 Pro wireless before, but I made it wired again because I wanted to try out different encoders. So here's the story of how I was unable to make it wireless again. This is the new Nice Nano controller I received a few days ago. And this is my old Nice Nano controller that's connected to a 1000 milliamp battery which was originally used for the left side of the Lily 58 Pro. These are 200 milliamp batteries which are 4 mm slim that fit in just nicely between the PCB board and the Nice Nano controller. And these are round pin headers that I'll be soldering to the Nano controller because the ones that come with it are flat pin headers which don't fit into the sockets that are on the PCB that I have. So uh, first we remove the OLED and the Pro Micro controller, then stick the pin headers into the socket and then put the Nice Nano onto the pins. Do some simulation on battery placement and the wiring here. Next is to solder a switch to the battery connection because I prefer to have a physical button to turn the thing on and off. And then solder the Nice Nano to the header pins, solder the battery, test if it works, looks good. And lastly, put the battery under the Nice Nano and stick it back onto the PCB. We're done with the left side, so now I desolder and resolder the battery for the right. And that's all the soldering that was needed. Okay, so that was the easy part. Now it's time to crack my head on how to get the ZMK software to work. As an introduction, there are many firmwares that are used for keyboards, but the most common ones which I use are QMK and ZMK. QMK is for wired keyboards, while ZMK is for wireless keyboards, which can also be used as wired. ZMK needs to be paired with wireless Bluetooth controllers, hence why I use Nice Nano since they look like the least painful to use compared to flashing stuff on Pro Micro. Now, generally, ZMK is not noob friendly, especially if you're a normie like me who doesn't do any sort of programming. So first off, I go to GitHub, create a repository, go to PowerShell, do the incantation to create a default key map for the Lily 58, and then do some editing. What I should have done at this point was to test the keyboard with the default firmware, but I was too cocky so I went ahead and edited the firmware files. First off was to make the overlay file, this is fine. Then I edited the West YAML file with these things here. One is the FTC for mouse keys. I know these work because I have them used for my rev wing. And the other is the infused Kim repo for the slave encoder because of the two roll encoders I have on my right keyboard. Now, I have no idea what these things are or how they should work, but it turns out the firmware wouldn't compile, either because I had two projects or because the path for the slave encoder was incorrect. I have no idea what went wrong. In the end, I really don't remember which setting I used that successfully compiled the firmware. After that, I also made a DTSI file that's supposed to be the initial setup of the keyboard and mentioned which pins the scroller was using. Pins 20 and 21 for the left encoder, pins 20 and 21 for the right encoder, and pins 2 and 3 for the second right encoder. Not sure if these are correct, but the firmware got compiled, so that's good. I edited the config file and then the key map file to turn on the encoders and tell them what to do. And finally, after like two hours, I compiled my first hopefully working firmware. Download it and flash it and left is good, but right did not work at all. Which by the way, the RGB didn't sync with the left master side too. I tried a few more combinations and failed so much that I decided that I'll live without slave encoders, but the right side still doesn't work. I also tried to use default settings like remove the DTSI file so ZMK uses the original DTS file in their repo, but the right side still doesn't work. By the way, I flashed the left firmware into the right key and the keys do register, but it just doesn't work when I flash it with the right side firmware. In conclusion, after 4-5 to five hours, I gave up on getting the key to work with ZMK. My guess is ZMK is keeping pins 2 and 3 which I use for my second slave encoder for something else. Or the slave encoder itself is causing the firmware to not work on the right side. Which is weird because the left firmware still registers keys when I flashed it on the right side, so... ZMK is a mystery. I'll just be waiting for ZMK to officially support mouse keys and multiple slave encoders in the future, I guess. In the meantime, the Lily 58 remains wired till then. Learned a lot today about what not to do and how to fail, so that's all. 
Thanks for watching.